Yeah, very good morning to you. My name is Daniel Wahome and welcome to Sport Check on the 26th day of July 2021. It's another Monday when we get into conversations around sport. We shall be talking about recreational running and doing it for the city of Nairobi and enjoying the beauty of the capital. That's a story about the Nairobi run that takes place on the 14th and 15th of August. It's going to take over a weekend. It has no time limit. As long as you don't break the curfew, you are going to be safe. It's going to be okay for you. That's one conversation that we're going to be having. We shall also be talking about Team Kenya at the Olympics and also the rugby program. That's the main focus for Team Kenya this week, alongside volleyball, boxing, beach volleyball, and also a little bit of swimming. So conversations around that. Kenya this morning lost to the United States, now 1914, while the beach volleyball team lost in straight sets to Brazil. That's the team of Gaudentia Makwa and Brax Cities Agala. So they did lose, and Kenya will be playing against South Africa, and that's at 1 p.m. We'll be getting into a conversation around that. And after quite i mean just two weekends ago we had one great moment when the kenyan women the basketball lionesses were defeated egypt and qualified for the afro basket championships well in february the men had qualified for the afro basket championships that's going to be in kigali rwanda and we're going to be having a moment where i'm going to get dwarfed by coach sadat gaya and also Ariel Okar, the man they call the doctor. So those conversations around sport here with us. And also keeping up with what's happening in the news. We shall be joining uh, Yusuf Farah and he's at the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development Headquarters in Nairobi. And there's conversation about teacher preparedness and there is also the matter of Madeira MP Rikade Gashabwa who is uh, being arraigned in court today after spending the weekend in the police cell. So for all those conversations, join us over the next two hours right here on sports check our twitter handle is at kbc english our hashtag is sports check kbc our sign language interpreter we shall be starting with susan tuku she's joining us in a short while and straight to the first interview and it is about the nairobi run and this one's going to be taking place and in nairobi on the 14th and 15th of august it does not have a fixed venue so long as you're in the capital Nairobi, you can do that. And we've got the coordinator of the Nairobi run, Younes Iraqi. Younes, good morning. Good morning. All right. And uh, just to mention, Younes is from Morocco. And we, Morocco has got an interesting running history. We can talk about, you know, uh, Hisham El Geruj. We yeah. can talk about Saoe Dawita. Yeah. So many so, runners. Yeah. So many great runners who come in. And Sufyan El Bakali. So we'll be talking about, we'll close with the Sufyan El Bakali story in the steeple just because we have a little conversation about that that we must finish we can't okay. be hitting kenyans in the steeplechase <laughs> but for you coming yeah. to nairobi and getting into the running community how did it start oh um, nairobi run is is new but mm -hmm. uh, i mean i'm in kenya since uh, 2014 so we have a company here we do events we do uh, uh, things that uh, i mean are no more happening now i mean because of COVID. Mm -hmm. so we started doing these online events and doing also running so we started with M plus run that we did uh, like uh, last year uh, in several countries that was a success and now we move to a new concept that is Nairobi run the city run so we are doing it in several cities we are doing it in Nairobi we are doing it in Mombasa we are doing it in Eldoret we are doing it in in uh, in Kisumu we are doing it in Machakos uh, and it maybe we will also do it in the end. this is not yet confirmed so the concept is new it's a new concept it's about celebrating the city you are in and celebrating the runners so by celebrating the city we mean celebrating the beauty of the city the beautiful running places like for example in nairobi you have so many beautiful places like karura like arboretum like ngong road sanctuary forest uh, gong hills uh, you have even some estates like runda lavington where people the runners can enjoy running there and they do run uh, run there so this is what we mean by celebrating the city we feature all these beautiful places and we show how beautiful and where people can go and run in uh, in nairobi then we celebrate the runners so by celebrating the runners here we mean featuring all the runners groups and we have today with us uh, uh, members of Tipua Tipua, members of Urban Suarez who are coming also for an interview. And we have all other runner groups, the main ones like Team Jasho. Mm -hmm. We have uh, 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 like almost 
everyone. Like, the Hashari, the Hashari, the Hashari. Yeah, Hashari. I was with them last uh, Sunday. Uh -huh. We went to Juja uh, and we went 10 kilometers uh, off road. And then we had like amazing day there with the Hashariers and they organize all the time. So Hashariers are with us. Uh, I mean, all the runners groups, uh, we have some legends like, uh, like Douglas Wakihuri. So he's also supporting us. We have David Tu uh, with Fitness with David, who is like a big runner. We have some uh, like uh, really big runners like Kenya. Um, she goes by Kenya Running Diva, Mary. She's also part of uh, Nairobi Run. We have uh, Katara Wawa, if you know her, she's like a big runner. And she goes and she draws with her itineraries with, uh, with her run. Like she draws one famous dinosaur of Nairobi with her itinerary. So she's also part of it. So we are featuring all these runners or whoever is active in the running community so that people can reach out to them directly. And the whole concept here is that we're not talking about elite runners here. We're not talking about Mary Kaitani, Edna Kiplagat, Catherine yes. Dereva, yeah. or Elid Kipchoge, yes. or, you know, the likes of Abel Mutai. We're talking about everyday exactly. runners. Yeah. How do you then get these running groups to get together and uh, prepare for this event? So what we have managed to do so far is to have like uh, excitement about all the runners communities so with us uh, because they like this idea of celebrating the city and celebrating the runners and most of them I mean we are still building the list I have here with me a list of all the runs organized and every day we have new ones like today this morning I was talking to David too he's organizing a, a car in waterfront run for his followers so they will be running and the Nairobi run this team Jashu are organizing Karura for uh, uh, no Arboretum Forest mm -hmm. run on Saturday uh, we have uh, uh, Douglas Wakihuri who will be running Gong Road, uh, Gong Road Sanctuary Forest because this is where he runs usually with his uh, members we have even some celebrity singers like the Frasha, Frasha. From, P, from P unit <laughs> so he's already started every Saturday now he's running with his fans preparing for the 14 in August where they will be running in Karura Forest and then Nairobi run also uh, Kata, uh, Katarawawa is, is running but that's quite a big distance 50 kilometers uh, wow. she's organizing on Saturday and everyone is organizing I have the list it's, it goes on and on and it keeps on being updated so let's now talk about you know COVID and what it means yes. for running it means that you can't organize a serious city yeah. run like uh, we've had uh, the Nairobi Marathon or the Nairobi Diamond run yes or something like an Eldoret City Marathon. Yeah. What's the procedure now for the various runners and mm. then how do they you know, also keep the COVID protocols in place yes. given the large number of people that can be there? Yes, so we recommend to people to follow the guidance of the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Sport. Everything is on our website with exact details of what they have to do. So they have to keep safe distancing uh, between them. They have to wear a mask. Uh, that's how we do it. And for our uh, run, that's why we decided not to organize a real physical run, which means we don't have a start, we don't have a finish. Okay. and we don't have one location so like if you register for Nairobi run then you can run either on your own alone in any of the, the, the running routes we have listed or any new one that you think is, is, is nice and should be featured and they have a button to suggest so that we update this on the website in our social media but they will run either alone or they run a small group of runners like they run usually or reach out to the runners groups who are organizing run and then join them and run with the protocol of COVID and things like that. So there is no, what we've done is that this is spread all over the city all over the weekend and all over the hours of the weekend so there will be at no point of time a large gathering at no place uh -huh. so the, because we don't want to go into this next edition I mean, we hope that COVID will not be here and we will be able to have start and finish in several locations so that people can, can enjoy again this uh, I mean, pleasure of running together. <laughs> so you've got the whole, uh, the whole thing of tracking an athlete. Yes. If, uh, for example, if I decide to run in, uh, from you know, just along Harithuku Road, yeah. up and down yeah. on that uh, weekend, I yeah. report to Akali, I can run, decide to make a five-kilometer run just moving yes. up and down this road. Mm -hmm. How then do I record that? 
information and put it up on your website as yes. you celebrate Nairobi. Yes. So for us, as I said, the, the concept is about celebrating the city. So and this is a fun run. So it's about enjoying the run, uh, and that's it. So we have a little board. Actually, to qualify, we are giving a T-shirt and we are giving a medal. But we are giving a medal to those who qualify. And to qualify, it's simple. You just go to the leaderboard and you enter which distance you have run, which, what timing you have done. And this is not important because we are not doing any ranking. What is important is the beautiful picture of the place you run in, that you place there, to show how beautiful is the city, how beautiful is your running route to the community. All right. Now, th now the other thing that we've got to talk about is making sure that people take care of the environment at these places. Mm. Karura Forest. Yes. Um, the late Professor Wangari Madai uh, gave mm. her life to ensuring that it does not disappear. Mm. Now yeah. people have a place to run. Yeah. There's an explosion. Yeah. Gong Forest, then Gong Hills. You've mentioned also the Nairobi Arboretum. Yes. What are the, the rules that you're putting out to people uh, so that we don't see um, water bottles all over yes, yeah. on the 16th of August. Yes. We, uh, the rules are already in place by Karura Forest, by Arboretum, which means when you enter, you cannot take with you plastic. There is no plastic allowed, no trash. So we, I mean, everyone will be following the rules of the location that are already in place. And of course, we encourage everyone to do not trash through. And plastic, they cannot get it in uh, because there is a security check and a check at the entrance of these places that make sure no one brings uh, plastic battle inside so that means if you're going to use it it has to be glass or metallic uh, that, that's the rule of the place the, the no plastic g gets in okay. that's, uh, that's their like strict rule they have <laughs> and for the runner groups um, how do you then encourage them to ensure that these places which are green Nairobi yes. was known as a green city in the south yes. how yes. then do you ensure that the keep the city stays green mm -hmm. so that the uh, running environment is always Yes. Beautiful. I mean, most of the runners are really involved already in, the, in making sure there is no trash, no, uh, all the runners' groups, and they will be able to talk about it once they, mm -hmm. they, they come to you. They have this as part of what they do, like with no trash, no thing, because that's the place they love, that's why they go running in these green places, and they want to preserve them and keep it, keep it like this. Mm -hmm. Now, something else, a lot of charity work comes into yes. this. Tell yes. us about, we know, some of the charities that yes. benefit from... The yeah, the run. Run. So we have Douglas Wakihuri, he has been helping us. So he has been very helpful, helping us promote the event. Uh, and he's a legend in Kenya. Like, uh, yeah, know, well, you know, he's uh, yeah, 1987 yeah. Commonwealth yes. Games champion yeah. for Kenyan yeah. to win yeah. in so London. Douglas is helping Kibera 7. So Kibera 7, they have a school and they have a running club. And they do this, it's seven people who are doing this. And uh, he's helping them. So we said with Nairobi Run, we, will, we want to also participate. That's also part of the concept of the city run, even in Mombasa and the others, we will have a cause that we will help. So which means that we will help Kibera 7 financially. That's our plan. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, I hope uh, it will it will be uh, like a, a, a good help. And in the case of Mombasa, yeah. by the way, yes. what would you be targeting? Well, Mombasa will be. We are targeting to do it in October. That's the the plan. The website is ready. Everything is ready. We are just now overwhelmed with Nairobi Run. That's why we didn't launch it. But in Mombasa also they have a lot of beautiful places like Bamburi Forest, etc. We are in touch with the runners. They are Mombasa Running Club. We have the Hashas also. They are also in in Mombasa. And uh, the plan will be to do exactly the same as what we are doing there, find a cause also related to education and kids uh, to help. And uh, from Mombasa, we'll take it further, which means that uh, Nairobi was the first one, is the first one. But for the other cities, we will try to promote even people traveling. Mm -hmm. The two, like from Nairobi to Mombasa over this weekend. So that's our plan to make it like really something to help people, f even from other cities, to go and discover the beauty of, of the oldest cities. I mean, I went to all these places, Kisumu, Eldoret, Eton, uh, Kis uh, Diani, of course, <laughs> you know, it's the beach, it's the beach. Uh, uh, Machakos, everywhere you have some amazing places to run. It's so beautiful. So for the runners, I think that's good to have them even traveling from the one city to the other, go discover the other places, and even those who are not serious about running, it's just about physical. You can even walk actually in Nairobi Run. Uh -huh. you, you are not. It's, I mean, we have women's uh, walk and uh, run group.
they are also part of it. They will be organizing, um, I, I don't want to say something that I'm not sure about, but they are organizing Nairobi Run 2, and in their group, you have also workers. Uh -huh. Well, something else, working together with the Nairobi Metropolitan Service and also um, the county government all over, how are you working with them to ensure that there is some legacy that is left from this event that's taking place yes. on the 14th and the 15th yeah. of August? Yeah, so, so far we are in touch with Ministry of Tourism tourism actually uh, but it's now quite late in the process because we are three weeks uh, before mid-august but we hope that uh, they are really encouraging us which means they love the, the, uh, they, they like the concept and the ID and uh, hopefully this week we'll meet but will be mainly for other editions uh, because Nairobi run is not one one event it will be happening every year that's the plan the website will still be there it will be the place where all people can reach out to all the runners all the beautiful places of of nairobi and other cities will keep on being updated uh, so that it's it stays alive so for other editions we'll have stronger involvement no. all right we're speaking with Ines Iraqi. he's a coordinator of the nairobi run that's going to take place on the 14th and 15th of august right here in nairobi no specific location no star definite starting point no no definite finishing point it's all about you and your health well we shall be joined by two ladies who are going to be involved in that and to encourage us and tell us what's this recreational running including one who is in a club of only eight kenyans yes eight kenyans and out of those eight kenyans only two elite athletes are there so they'll be joining us shortly so i know they can get ready as uh, you know i can see oh yeah they're getting their mics ready for coming on to the set Younes iraqi let's move on to something about the olympics you're from morocco you know what happened in sydney 2000 20 years ago um when no uh, defeated hisham el, el geruj um for this year at the olympics there is somebody called Sufyan el bakali Mm -hmm. in the steeple chase he's giving kenyans a headache <laughs> yes. is that going to happen is, is that possible is it possible that sufian el bakali will get some good kenyan treatment <laughs> I, I, I prefer not to get involved <coughs> in this. Um, or I, um, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not following exactly <laughs> everything, so I prefer to skip this question. <laughs> no, but would you, who would you be rooting for, your countrymen or the, or the Kenyans? I mean, this is sport. I mean, uh, whoever is the best, I mean, deserves to be the recognized for it. Yeah. So we'll. Uh, I mean, good luck to all of them and. Uh, and I'm sure it's a fair play and it's, uh, it's about uh, sport and uh, competition. <laughs> well, Younes Iraqi has decided that he's going to skip that. Well, you know what? In less than two weeks, I'll have to send him a text and remind. And uh, then he's going to say, yeah, I, I know Sufi Anel Bakali. He's going to take the simple chase. More conversations about the Nairobi run coming. After a very short while, we will be joined by Avani Shah, who has run in all the world marathon majors. Mm -hmm. She has yeah. done all six. She has her medal that comes with that. And also we're going to have Margaret Wong. We're from a club known as Tipua Tipua. How would you come up with a name like that? Aban Suarez, they Tim Jasho. We already know about the Hash Harriers. They're joining us. Conversations about everyday champions. In just about two minutes as, you know, uh, Iraqi leaves the set. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hope to see you at the Nairobi run. Yes. Oh, I'm here. All right. So, my director, we'll go. a quick break. All right. Well, Iraq is just decided to walk. So, <laughs> the ladies, let's come join us in just a short while. So, I'll just give you a profile about Avani Shah and Margaret. They can, uh, as they join us on set in a short while. And it took uh, six years to run, um, to take, you know, to get, yeah, to get, to, it took uh, three years to get to that six star medal. Let's take a short break as. Avani and Margaret join us on set.
and welcome back to sports check on this monday morning the 26th day of july 2021 we are in a conversation about the nairobi run and this is about the public enjoying the city and in an activity that keeps you healthy and makes you have all the fun that you'd like to have we are joined on set by two ladies on my immediate left is avani shah and she has got a six-star medal from the world marathon majors it's one of the only eight medals in the country avani welcome to kbc good morning thank you daniel yes and we also have got margaret one who's a recreational runner with tipwa tipwa and welcome margaret thank you Wahome. well i'll start you know with avani for you you've done all the marathon majors and uh, just to take you it took you three years to go through this uh in 2017 london and berlin in 2018 chicago and new york and in 2019 tokyo and boston tell us about the journey to getting this medal uh, well, when I started this journey, there was no idea that I was aiming for the six uh, World Beach Marathons. It started off with London. All my family would always ask, have you done London? Like it's the only marathon that exists in the world. So when I did London, I finished and I met someone who had the six star medal. And I was just curious to see why he had such a big medal. Well, who was? Uh, he was, was a Kenyan or for, no no from he a was just uh, no he was from a different country you know when everyone finishes they walk around with their medals so I saw one person with two medals and I was curious why does he have such a big medal and I asked him about it and he told me about the six world major marathons and from there within two weeks I signed up for Berlin and it just carried on from there one after the other and London and Tokyo are the two hardest to get you know a registration for because they've got restrictions on numbers yes. and they also have got high entry standards how was it for you to get into those two events I actually ran both uh, those marathons for charity so when you run for a charity they have a set amount that you've got to raise and um, so you raise that amount to get a uh, entry oh. and for you Margaret getting into first of all tell us Tipwa Tipwa what's the name of that <laughs> what's the meaning of Tipwa 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 is a Swahili word mm -hmm. Kiswahili Sanifu um, of course most Kenyans do we speak Swahili we do <laughs> but we, we try to make it as difficult as possible for yeah. the rest okay so it means vigorous fit and sturdy and strong so that's what tipwa tipwa means it's actually a swahili word more the tanzanians would know more it more of the word than we do yes so getting into recreational running and yes. being a choir quite active how did the journey start for you all right so tipwa tipwa was formed about eight years ago really just to bring out fitness and active uh, active uh, individuals together to do active activities and one of them is running so we run we hike we do other activities of uh, fitness so running uh, has been something we do mainly on tuesday morning at 6 30 in the morning and on sunday tuesday and thursday and sunday morning so we get together group of people who live around especially kileleshwa kilimani lavington come together in the morning and actually join uh, in group runs so we motivate each other to get up get out of bed and just start running we actually have something that we say no runner is left behind well that sounds more like a military slogan <laughs> from the US Marines and for Avani the urban Suarez they are known and tell us about the running activities and how you attract people to be part of your group urban Suarez uh, actually started in 2009 uh, it's almost now 11 years since we've been uh, running with the urban Suarez and every Saturday we have an organized run from different parts of um, Kenya I won't even just limit it to Nairobi and uh, every Saturday most uh, runners are sent an email and from there um, we all come um, and run and we all wear our urban Swara t-shirts that way a lot of people have known about our group our t-shirts uh, has our um, email address on that and our website so many people um, just see that and then they google us and follow us from there and how then do you attract you know the public to get into this activity everyone i mean from for example last year mm -hmm. what was the impact when kenya had a lot of cessation of movement and the only thing i mean the only real activity people could do was run yes there was a lot of virtual runs um, 
well, I started uh, just randomly a small virtual run between some friends and more people encouraged me to do it uh, online. So I set up a little group uh, called General's Challenge. From one week, we ended up doing 14 weeks of different challenges. General's Challenge actually comes from you having this medal. Yes, it did. <laughs> It did. Uh -huh. uh, Tell us now about that challenge. So this challenge, the first week we came up with where you'll run, because a lot of people were working from home, they had more time. Mm -hmm. So we came up with challenges where you run 5Ks on Monday, 6 on Tuesday, 7 on Wednesday, th 9 on Thursday, and 10 on Friday. So it was five days of running, but every day you increase a kilometer. Then from there, I saw a lot of people were encouraged, and they kept on asking for more runs. So each week, I had to come up with innovative ways to come and um, come up with different challenges. And from there, I decided uh, to bring in some medals and sell them for charity. So we helped three different charities during COVID, just to buy food, groceries, and uh, that. yeah. And for you, Margaret, how do you then get uh, you know the public general? for example you can get people from you know the neighborhood so that they get into this activity because suddenly there is a fitness fad in the country everyone wants to run one to feel like uh, you are part of it but there are others who are simply saying we will run to stay fit all right so for our community we've really grown its referrals uh, the people who started it have grown because you've, your friend hears about it, another friend hears about it, so they keep referring the people. Mainly we have a, a big WhatsApp group in a big community, and uh, people just tell the, their friends, and they look us up, some will call us. There's our website, tipotipo.com, or our IG page where we talk about the activities we do, and they come in and ask to join, and we add added to the group. And when we have uh, runs, uh, we usually share routes, especially for the Sunday runs. So you get to see the route and uh, you join in and you, t you run your, your mileage, what you can do. You don't have to do the full 21 kilometers, which is what we have on Sundays. You can do five, 10, even 15. So we encourage everyone to just join. Yes. Now onto the Nairobi run, how do you then pull the people uh, who you would be associated with or in your running routes to get to participate over the two days? We've actually done flyers on our group uh, telling them what the Nairobi run is about. We've encouraged them to join and uh, they've, they've actually signed up and paid for the activity. So they'll be, we'll be running in Kileleshwa, Kilimani and Lavington. That's the, really the area we already run in. And uh, so we've encouraged people to tell their friends and then they can join. So anybody in that area even watching now who'd like to run and lives in that area can join tipotipo.com. What's the timing for that? in case I want to pop in. We'll be doing actually ours, we've, already, we've, dis we've decided to do it as a relay so that we know many people can do 42 kilometers so we decided uh -huh. to do it as 42. So you will actually have teams and you'll run maybe 10, four of you will do 10 kilometers or 10.5 to make the 42 kilometers. So we'll be doing that in the morning on Sunday at uh, 7 o'clock and on Saturday also at 7 o'clock so that's the time we'll be running. Yes, Simply and because it's virtual, mm -hmm. if you maybe can't make the time in, we can always accommodate you during the day. Avoiding the traffic. Avani, for the urban Suarez, tell us where, I mean, where you, you know, people would join you to be mm -hmm. a part of it. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't know where urban Suarez <laughs> have planned their Nairobi runners yet. Because uh -huh. um, we normally uh, give out a schedule like weekly. So every Monday you'll get an email to say where exactly you're running. So on, we shall be getting this more details about the Nairobi run from where Urban Suarez will be running from. One of the things that people fear when, when it comes into getting the, uh, into recreational running is there, there is a perception about a cost. Is it expensive to get into this? It is not expensive because we do we have an organized event every Sunday where we, we charge 800 shillings. Otherwise, the other runs are free. So it's not expensive. What you need to invest in as a runner is you need to have good shoes. Uh, you need to have your kit. You can't come in. You need to have your, so that you're comfortable during your run. The dry fit shirt, mm -hmm. the dry fit pants, good running socks so that you don't have blisters. And uh, come and we'll talk to you and explain to you how to run and you're good to go. Well, still a lot of conversations around charity uh, for this. Any charity that you're going to be involved in, Avani, as we get into the Nairobi run? Uh, at the moment, no, but I still want to run for um, Shoe for Africa, which is a charity that's based in Eldoret. 
um, uh, hospital. Yes, tell us about the shoe for Africa and what, because I know Eldoret, the moment you mentioned shoes and Eldoret, mm -hmm. talking about another probably 50 runners in the making. Yes, uh, shoe for Africa is uh, based in, um, is part of um, the hospital in Eldoret, which was uh, f um, opened by Toby Tansa. So he actually affiliates with uh, New York Marathon as well. Since I have done all these six marathons, I would like to give back to the community. I was supposed to run New York through his charity this year, but it's not possible this year with the work commitments. So hopefully next year I plan to run for Shoe for Africa. It's nice to do a charity where you can bring back the money back into our country. Running is related to Kenya, so why pay for charities abroad? If we can bring the money back here, that would be a great incentive. Well, Jeffrey Kamoro and Mary Kay Tanya, elder red people, yes. winners of the New York Marathon, they should be involved. And also Douglas has won that. Is he involved? Douglas Wakihuri? Uh, not much mm -hmm. uh, that I'm aware of. All right. For Tipwa Tipo, what's a charity that you would see, mm -hmm. you would want to get involved in around this Nairobi run because there is a story of the city and enjoying it and also the people? All right, for us, really, the charity is mainly to help the young children going to school because we have children who've done well in exams and you're finding they're not getting into schools. So that's really the charity we'd, uh, we'd want to get into for now, yes. Uh, what about getting the youth involved in this? There's always that conversation. The young people these days, they want the PlayStation, they want, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, the big headphones and the music. How then do you get them into running? I live with two of them in my house. And it's, it's, it's really, <laughs> it's a fight to getting them. They like, my children like basketball. And uh, even getting them out to do even hiking is difficult. The way we encourage them is getting them with groups of their friends. So when you get their friends to come together, then we tell them, let's do this together. That they find better than trying to uh, get, you can't, it's not easy to actually get them to actually join runs. Yeah. Well, she's from a generation who are keen for getting to, for starting out to play. I come from that generation. Avani, how then do you get, you know, the youth involved? Because it's a real concern about um, e-sports, which is quite exciting and is growing. But what about, you know, the, the health and the future of, you know, um, the future generations of this country? Oh, I guess it's just encouraging them to get out and do whatever they enjoy. I mean, some children love uh, football, some love basketball, netball, team sport. Um, but running, I've tried it with my kids. They don't enjoy it much. So <laughs> what I try to do is I, I get moms and their kids to come out. So some of my friends are not that active as well. So I'll try and encourage them to come out walking with me, bring their kids along so that the kids all have company. Whenever they're talking and stuff, that way they can j slowly just get into conversation and get out. We'll go to Karura. Um, they can walk like 10 Ks and time will just go and slowly, slowly they'll start enjoying it. I think it's more uh, making it a habit. Yeah. And yeah, Margaret, let's talk about the environment here. Yes. Because we ha if you don't keep the city green, we won't have any running places anymore. For us, I was going, I'm going to add what she was saying. We also encourage families to join. When we have activities, they come in as families, and that way you bring your kids along with you. Sometimes it's, you have to coerce them to come in, but they come in, and when they are there, they actually enjoy themselves, and then you ask them what was the issue. And uh, yeah, so for environment, we are big on environment because, especially when we do our hiking also, because we are out in the fields and out, out there in the forests, so we plant trees. We also uh, recycle all the, all the containers that we use. The bottles that we use for drinking water, we don't allow people to bring plastic bottles, even on the runs. We want you to, if you're going to carry your bottle, you carry the metal ones so that you can actually take it back to your car as you go home or, you know, you, ma you make sure you don't drop it. Um, so that's what we encourage for cleaning the environment. And we try and take part in activities that are to clean the area, Kilimani and those areas when there's those uh, activities that are happening. Have any weighing on matters to do with the environment and what other you know runners in other towns? I know you keep in touch with them. Eunice has mentioned about Mombasa, Kisumu, mm -hmm. Eldoret, Iten. How then do you get them involved to ensure that the running spaces stay green? Um, I think firstly, uh, when it comes to water bottles, you just don't encourage any plastic. Because no matter what, there's always going to be a runner who will just decide that no one's looking. I'll just pop this bottle and it'll just go into... Um, 
that yeah, city marathons have that bad reputation. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So even as like the Swaras, we have um, everyone's encouraged to come with their own water bottle, uh, which they can fill up. And even at uh, in between our long runs, these uh, water stops. So we have those big bottles where they can fill it up. Mm -hmm. That way, they have no choice but to come with their own bottles and uh, keep the environment clean. All right. One word, for Margaret, for those who want to be in, in the Nairobi run and why they should be a part of it on the 14th and 15th of August. It's a fantastic way to have fun and meet new people. Yeah. So I encourage you to join from wherever you are. You can also do it virtually and you'll still be uh, part of the run. What we do, we log in our runs using gadgets like Strava or Garmin's so that you can show the distances so wherever you are in the country or in the world you can still join the event. Avani, mm -hmm. I, I, I get people addicted into running. We're using and because this is a big encouragement. You know actually for us to go through the list of people who've got this, Edna Kiplagat, Emmanuel Mutai, the only two elite athletes, the others, mm -hmm. uh, Edward Mungai, Felista Kagwanja, we also have got uh, Jackson Degwa, Caroline Ongeri, and the first one, James Waliaula. Oh, yes. So get, mm -hmm. how do we then get people involved so that we have more of these medals coming to this uh, running country? Oh. <laughs> Firstly, it's it's quite a costly affair to get in uh, to run these marathons. Travel and travel, well. and then um, charities. Mm -hmm. I ran three out of the six via charity. Two I got through ballot. Mm -hmm. um, but um, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. um, trying to run this uh, and raising money through charity, you just have to find innovative ways. I actually was buying and selling toys and that's how I actually raised all the money for all the three charities that I ran for. Mm -hmm. Getting money um, for charity is not easy because there are so many causes out there and there's charity fatigue as well. So you just have to find uh, innovative ways to make, uh, raise money. All right. Avani Shah, she is a six-star medal winner, which means that she has run all the six marathon majors. Chicago, New York, Boston in the U.S., London and Berlin uh, in Europe, and Tokyo in Japan. She's one of those who's going to be involved uh, in the Nairobi run the 14th and 15th of August. Let's all enjoy the city. And like it has been told, in October, we will be going to Mombasa. Mombasa Twaja. Tipwa Tipwa. That's the correct one to use. It means that you're strong and you're steady. And also, Margaret Wamboy, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Remember, stay fit, keep running, do not litter the environment. And if you do run at a place, make sure that you do plant a tree. Keep your city green. We'll be taking a short break. And you all know the big conversation that's all around the world of sport right now. The Olympic Games in Japan. We're joined by Michael Kwombo. He's going to break uh, uh, down for us. What's gone down? You know, with Kenya Sevens, they'll be playing against South Africa at 1 p.m. after losing to the United States in the morning. And reactions from Mad uh, Madison Hughes, Martin Yosefu, Jeff Luch, Collins Injera, and Coach Innocent Simiu. Coming up in just about four minutes time. A little break and we talk about the five ring sport.